Today we're going to talk about something called methylene blue. Methylene blue has been around for centuries. It's thought to be one of the oldest drugs ever known. Uh, it's been around since the uh, 1800s. It's been known to be used for cyanide poisoning. You'll probably find methylene blue in most emergency rooms these days. My experience with it is we compounded some methylene blue for things like bladder irrigations. If there was some surgery performed, they would use it to try to uh, find leakage because of the ability to find the blue, um, illuminate it. Um, I believe it's also being used in some gastric bypass follow-up. They'll put some methylene blue solution into a surgical area again to find out the success of the surgery. But more recently, and it's been around as an industrial dye. So from a textile dye to a clinical wonder, methylene blue is now being shown when ingested orally, we're seeing some remarkable results. And there's still a lot of research that needs to be done on it. But we need to, we need to talk about it. Uh, we need to make people aware that it's potential. We're working on the ability to make it. So as a textile dye, it stains everything blue. And years and years ago, you could buy methylene blue off the shelf. Moms would buy it for babies with thrush. And they would paint the inside of their mouth for that yeast override causing the thrush. I remember selling it and warning moms, do not get it on your counter. Do not get it on the baby's clothes. Do not get it on your kitchen towels because it's going to stain it blue and it's not going to go away. So part of our uh, part of our angst right now is bringing it into the lab. Obviously, we have the chemical. We're ready. Our formulas are ready. So we're very close. We're maybe within a week of being able to provide it as a prescription to people in need. But we have to be very careful about our process because it's going to if if it's not handled properly, it's going to stain up your equipment, the inside of your hoods. We were in Houston um, close to a month ago learning from a lot of our colleagues that are doing more of it and learning from their experience. Uh, but I think it's important that, again, the public be known, uh, be aware of what methylene blue is and the potential that it might be able to help. Basically, methylene blue powers the mitochondria. Every cell in your body has a mitochondria. And the, so it's the furnace. Mitochondria is the powerhouse. It's the furnace of every cell in your body. The mitochondria is it's a bi-layered uh, material inside the cell, so it's smooth on the outside, but on the inside it's folded. And it's the surface area of the folds in the mitochondria that transport energy, that create energy for that cell. Methylene blue is showing to actually energize. There's a process called ATP. It helps energize a process um, involved in the Krebs cycle. These are all energizing cycles that our body needs. And methylene blue is now showing to be very, very beneficial to the mitochondria, which I think is a really, really big deal. So what's it being used for? It's being used for everything from as an antimicrobial. Years past, it was used topical on an infection. We don't see that anymore because mostly because of its staining properties. It's being used um, as uh, antiviral. It's being used in long COVID. We're seeing some feedback that it's helping people with long COVID. But I think the most interesting thing is we're seeing it being used for the symptoms of, of early onset dementia and even some Alzheimer's. And the urgency of introducing it is, has a lot to do with some of the research I've done in the last couple of weeks that if it works for a patient, it may not be able to reverse some of the symptoms, but it may slow the advancement further. And I think that's really important. Is it true? Out -based evidence, out outcome based evidence is from my colleagues in the country that are already dispensing it and using it is that they're seeing some positive results. I've had some phone calls from patients interested in it, having heard about it, not even knowing that we had it in the, in the compounding lab. So there, there's some real interest out there. We actually have a couple prescriptions that were just presented to us in the last week, which again is, it's ramped up our urgency to really figure this out and get it into a capsule form so people can ingest it. 
Um, the other thing that we, we're hearing that it works for is inflammation. So we talk a lot about LDN and we're seeing it used in combination sometimes with the LDN for some inflammatory, inflammatory conditions that we may not get, be getting the outcomes that we want. So again, it's, a, it's another tool in our toolbox. I think it's, it's important that we understand that there's a, there, there's a downside. It, you have to be very careful with some of the medications that, that, that are on the market. Um, there's a lot of it being used for psychi in psychiatric medicine for severe depression. And, but some of the drugs that people are taking, you can't do them both. So you have to, you have to screen patients thoroughly to make sure that they're not taking something currently that the methylene blue might have an adverse reaction in. Some of them are old drugs. MAO inhibitors, they're an old, old drug. I don't, I don't even know if we have any in the store anymore, but there might still be some patients that take some MAO inhibitors. You don't want to use methylene blue. But there are a lot of people out there that I think can benefit from this. Uh, you can also win a bar bet if you're on methylene blue. You could tell somebody that if I drink this brand of beer, it turns my urine blue and you win the bet because methylene blue will make your urine blue. Some, some places, some people we hear are buying methylene blue off the internet. It's in its, in, its industrial form. I think that's dangerous. These are not pure products. They're for industrial use. There's stories of contamination. There's stories of other chemicals in these because they're really to be used as a dye, not to be ingested. So I think it's super important that we use what you'll see on this, the methylene blue is a USP, United States Pharmacopeia grade. That is a pure, pure powder. So I think it's pretty safe when it's used properly. Um, some other side effects might be a little bit of headache. Um, we're hearing maybe a little GI upset. To me, the interesting thing is headaches. So start at a low dose, gradually work up. If you work it up a ways, you might exhibit some headaches. Maybe we've reached the tipping point on the dosing, so then we would back up. There's, I think there's still a lot to learn about this, uh, but I think it's really, the triad of care comes into play big time here. Your physician, the compounding pharmacy, and the patient working together, trying to find the dose that works best for you, or in combination with something like LDN. The, the drug is hormesis, uh, which means at high doses it's toxic, at low doses it's beneficial. And that's really what we're talking about. We're talking about five, five milligrams daily, five twice a day, five, 10 milligrams twice a day. Those are the dosings that I've learned from the medical people that I've been to listen to at our most recent compounding conferences. Um, two physicians in particular, Dr. Zylesdorf out of Chicago and Dr. Cares, who lectured about their use of methylene blue and their protocols for their patient population. Um, and they're dealing with people who have deep depression, a lot of inflammation, post COVID, uh, long COVID. So these are, these are people that really need that help. And the reports and the case studies presented really showing how beneficial some of these products and combinations have been. So, the other, the other thing about methylene blue is one, one, one of the physicians talked about um, photo biomodulation using light therapy and some of the light therapy equipment's really expensive. So she teaches her patients to go outside before sunrise and present their face to the horizon because the infrared rays that first come up over the horizon are the most intense at that early morning sunrise. And she's finding that patients using methylene blue absorb more of those infrared rays. So you can see there, there's a wide range of information here. There's a lot to digest. We're gonna learn more as we embark on this more, but if you're interested or you have any questions, we're the people to, to call and hopefully we can compound methylene blue that can help you.